Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to part two of Crafting Quality Queries. Gosh, there's been a lot happen around the world since we met last month to discuss queries. We're glad you're with us from your remote offices today. A lot of you have asked about the Aceware team, and for this webinar, I'm in Oklahoma with my daughter and grandson. Lindsay's presenting from Dallas in her home office, and Chuck is in his home office. AJ, Matthew, Joe, and Mike are all working from the Aceware headquarters. We have a large cabin and a lot of space for folks to work from. And Jason's working from home, and Stein continues to work remotely from Wisconsin. Aceware is very familiar with the remote working environment. And we know that working remotely may be new to some of you, and we want you to remember we're here to help you with those adjustments you may need to make along the way setting up online courses or working remotely in general or using ACE Web Desk Access or mass emailing. We want you to send those questions and give us some calls. We're here to help. But today, Lindsay's going to share part two of Crafting Queries. And as she presents, you can type in your comments or questions in the chat box. I want to pre let you know that Lindsay's going to be asking what information you might want or need to query from your unit, so be thinking about your questions now. So, Lindsay, with that, I'm going to turn things over to you. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're doing part two today. It's uh, Quality Queries 201, and this one we're going to go ahead and subtitle Query from a Distance, Six Feet Apart at All Times, so uh, all of us working remotely and being on the webinar, we are we are all following the rules. So what we're gonna do today is, I'm gonna get the slides to work. We're gonna do a quick review of what we covered last month. Then we'll talk just a touch about manipulating some, some query elements, uh, what, what we can do inside the query when we're building or, or modifying it. And then we're gonna look at some, some complex queries. Uh, I did get a couple of requests so we are going to look at those, and like Sharon mentioned, I do hope that you've come with some ideas and some questions so that we can you know, drill into to what you need as well. So then, let's get going on that review. We talked last time about query qualifications. So a query, what is it? It is a question. More than anything else, it is a question we're trying to ask of our data. You wanna start out broad, cast your net as wide as you can, and then start you know, pulling it in, becoming more specific with what you're asking. And of course, the question is the query, and then that answer you get from it is your report. We also talked about locating queries. Where are they? They're in most reporting areas. When you're thinking about your reporting area and where you want to go, you'll want to think about your question. You know, um, how many people registered in a Spanish class last year, you know, then we're looking at keywords, right, like registered. So we're probably going to go to a registration reporting area. And always remember that when you have print options on your report screen, they can and will affect the query. So if you're running mailing labels and you, you can automatically exclude don't mail names right there. Uh, also things like waitlisted registrations, canceled records, inactive names, you, you want to always consider those. And as we get going today and we look at a few others, you'll, you'll start to, to notice why. Once we find our query, yeah, we... Yeah, I needed it now. Wait, now it's green. Yes. So what do we need? How do I do that? Sounds like... We were trying to mute someone was, and it's not quite. All right, I'm going to keep going. Uh, the query list manager we talked about last time, you can sort by your run count or your query title. So <clears throat> if you know you've run something all the time, you can have it at the top. If you just created something you know, a week or two ago and you want to get back to it, you might want to sort that run count the other way. You can also right click it so that you can filter if you know the name of the field or you know part of the title. And of course, holding your left mouse button down on either side, on either the title or run count, is gonna tell you at the top right sort of what, what's in that query. And as we are crafting our queries, include what we need, right? Include what you need, make sure that it's a clear title. That's, that's one of those things I cannot drive home enough. Make sure that it's clear so that you know what, what you're doing. 
And of course, you, you can copy things when appropriate. You might have to tweak just one or two bits of it, so you can make a copy. Don't fill in values unless you're always going to use the same ones. Don't give a query the same title as a report. I'm going to say 98% of the time, don't do that. <laughs> you may actually have a very specific report, very specific query, but in general, don't do it. And you know, don't modify an existing query if you're asking a new question. Uh, you you want to ask that new question, that new query. So were there any questions or queries from last month? You've had a chance to think about it, or now that you've seen we've gone through a quick review, you've thought of something, let's go ahead and pause here, see if anything's coming through. I'm not seeing any questions yet. Carry on. All right, we'll keep going. <clears throat> so then we're going to talk about manipulating query elements. Hopefully we remember this screen from last month. This is our uh, query editing screen where we're adding bits of it, you know, fields, or we might be taking something off. So we've got some important ones here, right? We know to add. We have that add button, so we're adding additional elements. Uh, you can see the elements in this example. You've got a location, a course begin date, and a subject code. Maybe we want to add uh, and the instructor might be, or, or, and, you know, it meets on this certain date, we would use an add. You can also edit an existing element. So let's say that subject code begins with, instead of to be entered later, it, uh, you, you want to put in, um, <clears throat> is maybe in a list. You can edit that specific one. You can switch order. We're going to talk a little bit about order later, but if you have multiple, like more than two query elements, if you have three, four, whatever, it's going to start, it, it, it's asking in order. So you might want to pull subject code before begin date, or you might want to pull course begin date before location. So that again, we're, we're starting broad and we're, we're drilling down. You can move. So let me go back to switch for a minute. If you have just two, you can switch them. If you have multiple, you can, you can move them around. We can move the subject up to, you know, before the location. Bracketing. Bracketing is fun. Uh, if you've done a report function, you've, you've seen the, the, you know, this must be in parentheses in order to do that. And then, you know, what's, what's read in inside is, is then applied to the outside. So if we can, you know, dig way, way back to, you know, math in middle school or something, order of operations. It's the same idea here, and I do have an example to show you. And of course, you can delete an element. I've got my begin date in there. You know what? I actually don't want that in this query at all. Let's go ahead and remove it. All right. Now, we've done a quick review. We've done a, a bit of manipulating elements, but I want to go ahead and just jump right in. Like, let's, let's talk about some complex queries. And there was a, a question that was sent about putting together a mailing list for uh, specific populations, right? So a specific fee that, that folks had. So what I'll use in my example is faculty and staff registrants. So if you offer a special fee to faculty and staff, you probably have that on a course record and also on a on a name record, we're hoping. So how, how would we know starting out who our faculty and or staff are? The first place is the fee category on the name record. Uh, I hope that you're using this. If you do offer special fees, you know, faculty, staff, alumni, current students, uh, you know, any, any number of categories. Uh, we've got one school that uses a, a resident versus a non-resident. So if you have a fee category assigned on the name record, that does tie to a course fee description. So that if I have it on my name record and I have that fee assigned to the course, I'm automatically going to be assigned that specific fee on the registration, okay? So how do I know who's faculty or staff? They have a, the, the C category assigned to their name record. They should also have that C assigned on a course where it was available. So, back to our question. 
who should be on my faculty staff mailing list, our, our faculty staff registrants, right? So first thing, obviously, we want to look current faculty and staff, find that in the query. Registration, right? That was part of the question. So we want to have registrations in there. And then this is a mailing address. So just like the example we used last month where we didn't want a mailing address to be, you know, the, the address to be an empty field, we do want to include that here, right? Because we, we want a good list. We want to, to, we don't want to have to print more than necessary if something's empty or, you know, export an Excel sheet and send it to a mail house where we've got bad records. If we can, if we can keep as much of that clean from the outset, it makes everything easier later. So, going through the steps again to craft our quality query. At our reporting area, I think I did this in mailing labels, we again are going to start by just clicking the add button, right? Because we are adding a new query. And we want to give it a specific title. So, the title I'm going to use in this one, you'll notice that it begins with mail, okay? So in this case, we know that we need to pull a, a mailing list, right? We know that we're always going to, to be pulling a, a mailing list based on this. I think in that situation, it is perfectly appropriate to have a query that is, is closely tied to it. Because you may have a, uh, an email list that you want to pull a different time. And of course, that query would be focused on email, right? Not being empty or do not mail or, or things like that. So we can say that this one is just for mail. And again, we're talking about the fee category, right? So we're looking on that name record for the fee category. Uh, this one I'm going to say contains. And we also want to look at a course begin date within a range, right? Because we're looking for registrants who have that fee category assigned. And we're going to, you know, pull a mailing list for them. So there's my title. Once we get to this lovely screen, we can click add to begin adding our fields, right? So the first thing that I'm going to select going with the title is mail, right? That's the first part of the title. I know it's a mailing list. So what do I want to do? I'm going to select address one, right? We, we know that we're sending mail, so we want to make sure that it's not an empty field. If you have your addresses entered appropriately in Student Manager, they're always going to start with that address line one. So once I select that, we get into the operator. And I want this is not an empty field. We are always starting with this query for a mailing list. We always want to make sure that that address is not an empty field. Okay, we get that done. Once we double click, are we, you know, finished creating it? Yes. And then we just keep, we keep going. Okay, so we're going to add again. And this time we're adding our fee category, right? So when we click add, we are presented with the option to select a connector. In this case, looking back at our title, we know it's mail, we want fee category contains and, but if, if it's mail, then <laughs> add an extra and for fee category contains, right? Stop me if there are questions, Sharon. I, I, I wanna make sure I'm, doing this as, as clearly as possible. So in case anyone has questions, go ahead and ask them and we can back up. Absolutely. Once we say add, mm -hmm. Is that a question? Okay. Fee category contains, we say and, and then we look for our fee category. We will find it in there. We double click fee category names. Now, what I, I what I'm using in this example is a contains text. You might not want to do that, right? Uh, you might want to use a begins with or matches. You might want to use within a list. Maybe you're pulling a mailing list for a few different C categories all at the same time. Uh, I could have used exactly matches, but we're going with contained, contains text here. What that means in the long run is that when I run this query, if what I enter during the query 
if I enter the word faculty and there's the fee category faculty staff and also a retired faculty fee category, those will both be pulled into the data into the report. So keep that in mind. Now, again, when selecting things like um, begins with or matches, does not begins with, uh, pretty much everything in here except that is, is an empty or is not an empty field, you're going to be prompted to enter that value. Since our query does not explicitly say faculty staff fee category, we don't want to enter anything here. We want to ask later. So again, we can keep this query a little broader for other mailing lists we might need to pull. Specific, broad values, specific questions, broad values, you can run it again later. Okay, we are finished creating that one. We can add again. So we're just continuing to go forward. Again, for this one, we're going to use and. I decided to go by course begin date for, for when people are reg were registered. You could also use uh, course number. I like using course number. I think that's a great one because you can, you know, narrow it down to terms. But since this is just any registrant, we could use, uh, we also could have used a number taken, right? Uh, have they taken more, have they taken any courses? But in this one, we'll use the begin date. Because maybe you don't want to mail to people who haven't taken a class in five years. And begin date, again, I said was within a range. It's really between two dates. So that's what we would enter there. Any questions about that? I'm not seeing any questions right now, Lindsay. All right, so then let's get into something fun. That's a very straightforward one, right? We wanna know who's got the fee category assigned. We're assuming those are all of our registrants. But what if, for whatever reason, we have folks out there who enrolled in a course and got that fee. Maybe they were on the phone. You know, I'm enrolling them. Oh, you're, you're, you're faculty? Great, let me go ahead and give you the discount. But then I didn't go back and assign it to the name record. Well, that can be a little problematic, right? Because we want this mailing list. We want it to be accurate. We want to reach the people that we, we need to reach. But there's a, there's a potential of leaving folks out. But that's OK. There's a query for that. There can be a query for that. This one is a little more complex. What I'd recommend, and Chuck, chime in if, if you want to recommend a different reporting area. Um, I always think there, there are multiple ways to do anything, which is some of the, uh, that, is, that is the blessing of student manager. We get in there, we find what we need. Uh, I'm going to look at registrations with fees and payments because, hey, maybe while you're doing your mailing list, you want to see how much money you made. This is just like added bonus data, right? We want to think about the course number because we know we have registrants. And we know that that's, that's in the area you can query on it. And, right, do not mail should be false, right? So we're looking at a course number, and we want to know that the people we're pulling are cool with getting mail. And, right, we're pulling a mailing list based on, you know, registrations too. Here's the fun part. And we can include in this query the name C category because we're looking for those folks or the registration fee description. So now we can, we can set up a query that is we're, we're getting our registrants, we're making sure they want mail, we've got the C category assigned, but in case there isn't one, we have this, this fail safe of, well, they got the C description, right? So. We're going to do this one in real time. Uh, this one, I think, is, is going to make much more sense, <laughs> not by slide, but by actually doing. So we'll go ahead and cut the video from here. And we're going to find student manager. There we are. I'm going to close that. All right. So like I said, my suggestion was reports, 
registrations, registrations with fees and payments. Oh, yes, do that. Okay. Now, remember way back to the beginning or to last month when we talked about our print option screen and that items you select here will affect the results. Again, we want to pull this mailing list. We're gonna, I'm going to keep going back to that so we sort of know where we came from and where we're heading. We, we want to reach all faculty and staff. But maybe we had one who came in and wanted to take a course but had to cancel for some reason. So let's go ahead and include canceled records. Maybe you only want to pull a list for folks who have actually taken a course. Great. You want to do that? Don't check the box. All right, I'm going to recycle report area because I think it's great because then I don't have to mouse through everything. The screen's going to come right back up. Okay. We are on our query list manager. We can look at this and say, well, I don't see anything about, well, I see a fee description, but, you know, I don't see anything maybe with a course number and a fee description or anything that talks about fee category. So. I have to add a new query. All right, so what I'm going to do is again use mail because we know this is a mailing list and we don't want to try to run this query later with something about a, a mailing address in it if we're just looking for registrations with fees and payments, right? Like we, we probably really need to focus this one on mail. So, mail, uh, course. So I'm going to use proper case here. Course number is in a list I'll use this time. And uh, fee category. Oh, let's do a exactly matches. Okay, so fee category equals because I'm going to run out of space here. Or, right, or registration fee or fee description uh, equals. So we're going to do exactly matches on all of those. We know that this query is definitely included. So you could, if you wanted, instead of titling it mail, you could just add in the title and, you know, address one is not an empty field. You could do something like that. All right. Go. We get this lovely screen. I'll try to pull it here in the center. And we're going to add our first element. So we are doing here, we're going to have to add. Ah, I know what I did. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of take a look and see what we have here. Like, we know we've got course number. Um, we should have registration fee description. We do have that, but what I'm not seeing is something like um, B category, right? It would be in alphabetical order and it's not here. And I'm not seeing anything about an address, right? So we probably need to add a missing item. Right? So we know that there are some name items that are missing. So they are available in this, in this, they, they are available in the reporting area. We can add them as, you know, queryable fields. I think that's the word. If we're not sure what it is, we have a lovely help guide that has a fantastic screen layout. You can hover over any of the fields and see what it is. So just, just to see where that is, where that lives. Here's our name screen. The category, we can hover. All right, NMC cat is what we are looking for. Names, NMC cat, there it is. And of course, we give it a friendly description. I'm going to call it fee category name. Now, we do have to escape for it to be uh, able. And we also didn't see address, did we? 
so we need to add that missing item. Um, now, we also need to make sure that we're pulling a list of people who actually want mail, right? In the mailing labels area, you can automatically exclude. So we need to do a few more things here. One, name. Names, NM, uh, address one. Address, line one, call it names again, right? Cool, we got that one. We also had, we want to make sure that we have a do not mail, right? So we need to make sure that's in here too. Names, NM, NM, no mail. Do not mail. And we'll say names again, just so we know where it's coming from. Great, so we've now added missing items, right? We, we want to query on this, we're in this reporting area, well, we're not seeing it in the list, maybe we can add it, guess what, we can, and that is fantastic. Uh, so now once Lindsay, we've done this, yes? Yeah? Can I jump in? Yeah, go for it. Chuck here, um, for, for the folks who might not have ever done this before, um, one of the caveats about the list of fields that when you get into query selection is that that list of fields is not the absolute total number of fields from the tables we're searching that are available. It's a cherry pick list. Uh, back when first uh, Aceware staff member created this list, decisions were made about, well, what would be the data fields that people are likely to use in this area? And some fields were not included, but that's what Lindsay has just walked you through. Uh, as long as the table, in other words, the names a table is included or the register table is included, you are able to actually use that add missing item, find the field in the list, which as Lindsay, you were seeing the list alphabetically by file, you could pick the field, add it to your query, and from that point on, it'll always be available in your list uh, to be able to use for future queries. So I just wanted to, again, kind of give a little background to, to what you were doing there. Awesome, thanks. So we've added those missing fields. We gotta follow the directions that escape twice. We're back to the main screen. Now we can get going. So add, all right, so, um, what did I have first? My course number, so we can go ahead and add that. Double click. Course number. Again, you could have used begin dates, but maybe at some point you're only gonna wanna run this for certain terms, right? People from the last three terms. So we use course number. In this case, if we're gonna wanna do multiple terms, we, ha we can't use something like begins with or matches or contains text. I love the is within a list operator. I think it's fantastic because it gives you what, like 12 options you can have in this list. So if you wanted to do multiple terms, you could do that here. But I'm not going to enter them right now because then they would be part of the query forever and ever. Instead, I'm going to ask later. Okay, so we've got that. And then we have things like uh, the address, right? So I clicked add and now I need to get going on address. Did it not save? Hey. Oh, I have to go all the way back, don't I? Yes, okay, let's do that again. Add mail. Course. And list. And uh, what else was it? C cat equals and Registration fee description equals. All right, so we know that since it says mail, that we definitely have mail parameters in there. Also, we want a course number. Also, we want the fee category. Also, we want the registration fee description. Cool, go. Now we can start adding stuff. There we go. Okay, so the first thing in my title, of course, was course number. And I said we're gonna use is within a list. And we're gonna ask later. Cool, so we know now we're looking at a certain term. Now we're gonna add again. And we want course number and 
right? I totally uh, gave it a wrong title. So we'll get to go back and rename it. And address line one, we want to say, again, is not an empty field. Okay. And we're going to add again and say, and do not mail is false. Okay, so the box to exclude from mail is not checked. It is false. Awesome. What else did we have? And B category names. And for this one, we're going to use exactly matches. But again, we're going to ask later. Okay, and we have one more element to add, right? This time, though, we're going to use or because we want C category or registration fee description. So, or scroll all the way down, registration fee description. And again, I want to use exactly matches and ask later. Cool, finish. All right, so we have everything in here now. The way this query is set up right now, it's going to look at course number and address and do not mail and fee category or. So we want to take advantage of brackets. The cool thing is you can add brackets. If you find that you don't actually want them, you can remove them. But we definitely want to insert some brackets. My recommendation is going to be that we're going to bracket the address parameters. And we also, and we must, bracket the fee category or registration fee description. Because one of our parameters is and category or the fee description. That's the big deal. So let's bracket those. Any questions so far? Any, you need to stop me, clarify anything? Um, Chuck, Chuck here, Lindsay. Yeah. I, I think on your bracketing the address of the address mm -hmm. not mail, I think because those are both inclusive, you probably don't need to bracket those. Okay. The, or, the or is the element. Now, I, I, what you're saying is it needs to not be a, an empty address and it must not be do not mail is false. The yeah. and will take care of that. It's when you get into yeah. an either or case that uh, you need to tell it. Think of your algebra plus and minus and divide and multiply. If you're doing yeah. more three of those you got to put a bracket to say which two are the ones you want to compare together so all right well let's it do that hurt. your bracket isn't bothering you on the ands right uh, it's probably isn't necessary yeah it's one of those so we know that mail is one of those parameters right so i just figure we'll and that's, together but and that's fine so, and yeah and that that yeah. certainly is fine okay but so that we can, you know, use some more of the element manipulation things. Let's go ahead and click that bracket button again, and we can remove them, right? That's a great little button there. So I'm going to click on that one and that one, because that's where our brackets were. So now we have course number, address is not empty. So once it finds that, an, you know, we've, we've got a course number, we've got an address that's not empty. All right, cool, it's not empty. What's the next thing we're going to look at? Do not mail. It's false. Awesome. Now what are we going to look at? Now we need to see, does the fee category match this, or does the description match this? All right, this is good. We're not going to run into problems. I ran this before, I promise. But we had some great folks on the webinar who were able to help correct it last time. So I will look to you if we run into anything again. All right, okay. So let's first rename this, because it's not and, it's or. Right? Cool. All right, get ready. It's going to be awesome. So I'm going to select this. Since we have a list, we can throw in several, several years or several terms. So I'm just going to do what? 16. So course number matches, course number in a list. What I'm saying is if course number, you know, begins with 16, if it begins with 17, 18, 19, 20, let's pull it in. The next thing we're going to see is the fee category because the, the address stuff just runs address and mail. They run in the background. You could type in right here what it exactly matches. I suggest, especially since we're doing it exactly matches part, we're going to use the ellipses button. 
and it's going to show us which C categories are in our database that we can use. So I'm going to double click. There it is. Or registration fee description exactly matches. I'll click that again and faculty staff fee. And we're going to say OK. We're going to cross our fingers. I am doing this in a different database than I did earlier. And there we go. So I had additional reports selected earlier. I don't need them. I just want to get the data. I can hit escape and get my default report. And here we go. We have results, and that's exciting. So it looks like we've got Chuck. We've got uh, going down. We've got Chuck, Sharon, Ronald Davis are only three people. You will see blank rows in here. That's a report setup thing. You just have to change it to not print certain values. So let's remember this. It's like pick a card, any card, right? Remember your number? Sharon. Okay. You've got four people. Everyone still with me? Yes? Great. Awesome. It looks like it. Cool. All right, so we saw that report. So let's go ahead and look up these records, shall we? Let's look up Chuck. Charles. All right, so that one, I didn't even think to look at the, the course code. But we see here, of course, faculty staff fee. Chuck should be good in our book, registration-wise, right? Let's make sure, let's go back. Hang on. Look up names instead. Okay. Chuck also has a value in it in the address, line one, and do not mail is not checked. So Chuck is good. He is in that report. Our query works for him. Just to make sure we, we know what else is happening. Sharon, you're up next. You've got good address. Don't mail isn't checked. Got a course. That's exciting. Ronald. Address, don't mail, faculty, staff, B. And also he has this. So we know we're doing well there. But, but, then there's me. I have the faculty staff fee. You didn't see me in the report, and here's why. I've got that assigned, but don't mail is checked. So we know that the query did what it needed to do there, right? It left me out. And I think there's one other person that I set up before. Teresa. No, she wouldn't have had that. I had one set up for you earlier where the fee was actually selected, but hopefully you get the idea behind this. So the, I need a mailing list for this specific group of registrants, but there is some, there's a bit of a gray area, right? Did they have the fee category assigned or didn't they, and just instead paid that registration fee? So even these complex questions, you don't have to run queries in two different places and then try to put the data together. You can do it all from the same place, taking advantage of things like adding missing elements or you know, bracketing, having an and or. As a bonus, you could also um, add a couple of report functions to what you just ran to, you know, for anyone who didn't have that fee category assigned, go ahead and stamp it in their name record so that they are in there with the right thing forever. Are there any questions? Lindsay, one of the things anything. that, uh, well, well, Sharon is checking the question box. Uh, you mentioned at the outset that you were looking for mailing labels. Um, one yeah. of the things about using, whenever you get into doing queries, uh, dealing with registrations or payments, mm -hmm. and you're looking for names like mailing labels, which would be presumably one name per uh, report, uh, right. you need to, the user, you guys out there, may need to have what's called a just do it 
to group the names so there is only one listing of Charles Havlicek on a mailing label rather than having two or three that you have to kind of sort through. So that is something that is in more of the advanced reporting area where you can add a grouping to a report, which means I only want one instance of a name, no matter how many times it might occur between registrations and payments. Um, and to take that one step further, you could actually also sort that list by zip code so that uh, mm -hmm. the but so that your mailing labels would be in zip code. So, so again, those are not necessarily query functions, but they're parts of enhancement that are certainly possible uh, if you need to actually go to one of those areas to get, as you said, financial or reg detail uh, when you're dealing with uh, mailing labels. So. Definitely. Um, the other thing I guess I didn't show was if we were trying to pull together a mailing list, you could set up a report over in that area to format things like labels, or of course there's always the uh, quick and easy, you could check that export to file box so that it's sending all of the names out. You've got your Excel list, you can send it off to the mailhouse or, <clears throat> excuse me, do a mail merge in Word, whatever you need to do. So, yeah, that's how that works. Excellent. And still no questions, Excellent. any other crazy requests like uh, can I do this or not any anything <laughs> no no crazy questions okay um well Chuck do you have anything else you want to add any other examples you think would be oh I'm trying to think uh, again as far as um, that area of uh, mailing labels Again, uh, one of the things, the, the actual mailing label report area is one that does allow you to query on uh, course and I believe registration data. Mm -hmm. Really could have used the fee name begins. However, I'm pretty wow. sure it does not reference any financial data. So like the... Right. Uh, the, the if you were looking for uh, payment data, you couldn't do it. Technically, we could do the same query in Deadbeat and get a similar uh, report uh, set. But again, yeah. as we're dealing with registration level detail, if you wanted to print the labels out of student manager, you'd need to put in what's called that just do it to group, mm -hmm. um, group by the name ID so you only have one name label per uh, lists, no matter how many courses or registrations they might have uh, taken. So, mm -hmm. but I am. Um, it looks like I could have done this in mailing labels too. So there you go. Yeah, mailing labels. Now yeah. to think about it, yeah, because you really weren't yeah. ref pay table, just a register table, right? Not at all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's all I was doing. So yeah, you could run from from either. Um, I'll tell you what. If there aren't questions about complex queries necessarily. Um, what might be helpful are some sort of general tips, recommendations, since we're all in this weird working remotely, we're not really sure what's going on with courses, what we need to do. Um, let's just go back to mailing labels. Anyway, you should have in your, in student manager, in your database, if you don't talk, you know, get with your tech, there should be a mass email launcher additional report in mailing labels. So maybe uh, you've already contacted students or they've called you or, or something, or maybe you need to send out another email or you haven't yet, who knows, to let folks know what's, what's going on. You do have this report available. And because we have all kinds of great queries, we can use something like just a course number begins, right? Maybe you want to email everyone who's taken a course this term, whether it's coming up or not, to let them know what's going on with your courses, what's open, what's closed, what might happen in the future. Uh, you could also, again, use something like, uh, you know, a begin date and a range. Maybe you only want to contact people who may have enrolled in a course that hasn't started yet because you've already emailed everyone who's in a course. So if you need help with those things, 
call us, email us, whatever you need to do so we can get that information out there uh, so that you can get it out there. The other thing, of course, is with online registration yeah. right now, you mm -hmm. was someone about to mention something? Uh, we have a question. I have a question. And you have a brief. Have a, go ahead, go ahead uh, uh, Sharon, take it. Um, Lindsay, there was a request when, when you have a chance to demonstrate the editing of a query, uh, specifically like oh. deleting an element of a multi-element oh, yeah. query. Okay, let's just stick with this reporting area. Uh, let's see, I don't even know what that does. What is that one? Do we know? Huh, that's something in the demo. All right, let's say, um, I'm trying to find a good example, but let's go with uh, course code contains and name report flag is, let's just edit in general. <laughs> How about that? So let's just do the course number begins, okay? Let's edit that. So I've got a course. Um, Why don't you add, something else? add a couple elements and then delete one or go back to yeah. one mode? Just create a couple real quick. Yeah. Yeah, close your eyes, pretend like you don't see anything. But, because I'm not clicking the right things anyway. Come on. Hey, if I could just use my mouse correctly once and not double click and select things, that would be awesome. People from a particular state, let's add some things on there. <laughs> Y'all staring over my shoulder. I can't do it now, apparently. And let's add zip. Okay, and um, wait, well. Okay, so I've got this this query. It seems like a great query, right? The title says people from a particular state. Okay, so if I were to just run this, just throw in a well, who knows? K K for Kansas, right? Well, I know that I have people in the system who live in Kansas, so why didn't I get anything? Well, if I hold my left mouse button down and look at the top right, I see things like zip and course number in there. So we want to edit this. So I can click on edit, and now I've got these elements in here. I see, oh, and zip code is in here, and course number. So to delete an element, the first thing we do is click the delete button so that we are given the ability, <coughs> excuse me, to select what to delete. You click it once and it's gone. So I clicked on zip code and it's gone now. Same thing. This course number begins with. I don't. I don't want whoa, whoa, whoa. that. So Lindsay, I have to click. Edit. Yeah. Why don't you edit that and make it to ask later? Edit. Okay, we can do that too. So instead of course number begins with. So what I did was I clicked on edit. I choose what I want to edit, and then you get this lovely message. You're about to edit the condition you just selected. You can press the escape key to back up to change the comparison. You can also go all the way back to instead put in a, a different uh, field name. So, great. Thanks for giving me the heads up. You'll notice when I click edit that the course number begins with is already empty for me because I'm editing that, right? It said to, now it's empty. So let's go ahead and leave it on ask later. Cool. Finish creating? Yes. I've deleted an element. I've changed uh, something about the element. Let's go ahead and say OK. OK. But I'm still faced with this. Yes. Now you say, well, wait a minute. I want that to be a state, but also that they have an email. The email exists. I don't care about course number. OK, well, let's do the let's let's say the first thing, because now we've removed things that didn't apply. Right. Mm -hmm. And we've got this title that says from a particular state, but we already have this element in there that says course number. So now we're getting into this weird situation where we want to keep changing it. So do we want to keep changing or do we want to add a new one? Ah, I'll leave well, that question out in the universe. Or but just so we can see examples of adding or copy it. How about we copy it? Yep. But before we, well, the first thing yep. I want to do, though, is we still have something in here that, that our query title does not tell us. So I want to rename this. The first thing I want to do is rename it. Okay, people from a particular state and course begins with. All right, cool. That's great. 
but now we want to copy it just so yep. the first thing we select our query Oops. select our query and then click on copy when you copy it you have to give it a new title so what were you saying you don't care about course begins with but you want to know they Let's have an email address that they have an email address and email is not okay. empty there you go all right let's say okay now all that did was copy the existing query. If we were to run this right now, we would have state and course number in there still. So after you copy a query, you need to edit it. And we've got state in here, we've got course number, but we need email and we don't want course number. We can do this a few ways. I can click the delete button and then click on course number. I think that's the easiest way, so let's just do that. The other thing I could do though, Go ahead. Uh, there we go. Is, uh, illustrate the edit, though, because that would take you yeah. all the way back to the beginning. Yep. You're right, but it did demonstrate the edit mode on exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. That's where I was headed. So I'm clicking edit. Course number begins with. I'm going to hit my escape key again. So now I could change the operator on course number. If I hit escape again, I'm back to the field. So now, instead of course number, I can go ahead and find in here email, email, yeah, email. Name, name, email. Email address up, up. Oh, thank you. So now I'm going to use email address. Double click it. And we want to know that we have people where email is an empty, where they have email. So we want to say is not an empty field. Finish creating it. Yes, cool. All right, so now my query is looking at people from a particular state, and email address is not an empty field. Now, one thing that I'm seeing though is it says <clears throat> people from a particular state, but we're looking at state begins with. So that's not really what we want here, is it? If we're saying a particular state, we want to say exactly matches right particular is a match it is a specific thing so let's go ahead and do that yeah and we'll ask later again so now we have people from a particular state we want them to have an email address we can say okay we can say okay and there it is we've got the copied query with the the right elements and operators in it so we could run it and our state, maybe you, like me, like I, don't always remember all the abbreviations. You can use that button. And uh, I don't know, Minnesota. Apparently, we've got three people in the system from Minnesota. Let's say OK. We got something. I'm just going to go with the default report. We got three people here, Minnesota. And we are going to assume we've got, oh, we've got Lisa, good twin and evil twin. And let's uh, let's just make sure that she actually has an email email address. So let's go, Lisa. Email is here. Emails in the well, no, back. There we go. So we've got an email address in both. So those are some of the basic edit, delete, change operator, change field, query modification options. Any other questions? Uh, Lindsay, I would be remiss yeah. if, I, if I didn't put in a plug for the F keys, F2 and F, uh, <laughs> F5. If if a student, if somebody is just looking for a quick course list or a quick list of names based on some base name information, uh, your two function keys, F2 for course finder and F5 for name finder, gives you an Excel spreadsheet dump uh, of that uh, PDQ. So that again is, uh, uh, technically this is a query screen right here where you're, you're picking the values that you wanna have displayed uh, for a group of courses. So a, All right. a pseudo, pseudo query screen, so. Yes, it, it, uh, it, it's a query that's already set up for you with a whole lot of ORs in the background. Right, right. That you don't have to build it out. Yeah. So F2 and of course F5 being a name search. Yep. Any other plugs? Right. Any other questions? 
I'm not seeing questions. We've had several. Oh, go All ahead, right. Chuck. No, good. That was yep. just uh, chiming in. <laughs> several people have said they really appreciated the explanation of the brackets. That was new to them. And so you know that you get some some good takeaways. So cool. Um, not seeing any other questions, I want to remind people that next Wednesday, gosh, April 1st, uh, we have a student manager spring training. So if you have folks that are new or you just want to kind of freshen up your own skills, join Chuck next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central Time. You can sign up on our event link on our ASCOR.com page. So with that, with that said, we're so glad you're here. Be safe. Have a good week. And we hope to see a lot of you again next week. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.